Let's get right to it. The refs and VAR are at it again. We've had nearly two rounds of games over this Christmas period and there's been some really shitty decisions that we've seen. I think after the early season controversies where they had to start being competent, they've gone back to not giving a fuck again as the spotlight was off for a while. I'm also going to take a guess at why we finally had a female and black ref finally added to Premier League games. I'll tell you about that later. Let's start off with the absolute shit show that was Forest vs Bournemouth. First we had Willy Bully getting sent off for this challenge. He got a second yellow card here so VAR can't intervene but he's won the ball clearly. Even the follow through isn't dangerous. In fact here he gets fouled as Adam Smith steps on his foot. Referee is right there. What's he seen that 99% of us are not seeing here? Forrest of course went on to lose this game. It was a great game though. However they also got done by another decision later on. Here we see Adam Smith clearly handles the ball. Going by what we've seen being given in the league, this is handball. Hands away from the body and it's in the box. We can see it's in the box despite VAR claiming it isn't. It's visible, it's on the line or inside. It's a penalty and Forrest should rightly feel pissed off here. Two decisions, two incompetent decisions have gone against them. What is VAR doing here? The night before, Villa played Sheffield United and this happened. Sheffield United's Baldock playing tennis in his own box. It's a penalty. VAR is going to give it, right? No, they didn't. What's the excuse for not giving this? Someone is going to say, it's above the shirt line. Yeah, well, here's a little secret. That's not even a rule for handball. You can check the rules for handball on the FA's website. There's nothing about shirt lines in there. That's just what referees are using to judge it if the ball hits a player, not if the player makes a movement towards the ball, which is a completely different prospect. So why? No one knows. Maybe the VAR was busy ordering dominoes. Villa could have won the game and been top at Christmas if that was given. It's, com in it's incompetence, right? Surely only that. We had the big game of the weekend, cracking match, Liverpool versus Arsenal. And before Salah's equaliser, we had this, where Salah tries to flick the ball around Odegaard and he has a basketball dribble with it. Apparently VAR said he's falling to the ground and he's bringing his arm closer to the body so it's not handball. It's obvious they only bothered to look at this from one angle. It's one of the most blatant handballs of the year. Even the Arsenal players thought so. So did Dermot Gallagher who has a weekly show defending referees on Sky Sports. There's no reason for getting this wrong. Well, it depends on your club allegiances. But the referee was not even sent to the screen here. If Salah had gotten past Odegaard here, he would have at least had a shot. This should have been a penalty. Finally, last night's game, Liverpool vs Burnley. This was fucking crazy. Paul Tierney obviously has previous with Liverpool and Klopp. He's consistently given decisions against him for the past few years. Almost out of spite because of Klopp's severe dislike for him. And Tierney's from Manchester. He's got family, you know, that have some club links that probably shouldn't talk about. Also on VAR was Simon Hooper, the Wally who gave two yellow cards to Jota for not making contact with Udogi earlier in the season. Cody Gakpo had a goal disallowed for an apparent foul on Charlie Taylor by Darwin Nunes. Looking at multiple angles of this, there's no contact. This of course is corroborated by Charlie Taylor, who after his error, instead of shouting at the referee, like all pro footballers do when they're fouled, he puts his head in his hands because he thinks he's made a big mistake. He did, he gave the ball away and they scored. Paul Tierney, the man who had a birthday and loves winding up Klopp, disallowed it. Hooper wasn't going to overrule his mate, especially with the controversies they've both been involved in. I can't do anything, as Darren England would say. The second one, I have some sympathy for the referee, but not for VAR. Mo Salah is pushed into an offside position when Elliot scores, bringing up the line of vision rule, which isn't actually a line of vision rule. So Tierney is sent to the VAR screen. Cooper proceeds to show him just Salah standing offside rather than a push. Now to that line of vision rule. It applies only if it stops a player from playing the ball. Look at this moment when Salah is pushed. Focus on Trafford. He's already moving to the right, i.e. he would never have played that ball regardless of whether Salah was there or not. Common sense should have been applied by the referee here. But Hooper and Tierney displaying common sense would be a Christmas miracle. Still, that push is not covered by the laws, so I have some sympathy for Tierney, but use common sense here. Even Klopp said it after. There's also another moment in the game here where Bernie had a chance because Endo gave the ball away. But look at this image when Endo gives the ball away. Paul Tierney is actually playing advantage for Liverpool at this point. Yet he suddenly decides that the advantage is over. He has his arm out saying that it's advantage. But once Bernie get the ball, where's the advantage? The ball's been given away. 
there was no advantage. Another tierney fuck up. Finally, it was nice to see a female and black referee this weekend. I think they did well, and it's been too long since we've had a black ref. Uriah Rennie was the last one, and it was about 15 years ago. I'm still waiting with bated breath for Asians to actually be allowed to be involved in football, but that's a story for another day. For me, this was sort of a PR stunt by PGML to improve their failing reputation. No doubt these are good refs, but they could have been promoted a long time ago. This has been clarified by a lower league black referee talking to the BBC about his experience at the hands of PGMO. Hicks and Lovance told the BBC, I can name 10 other referees that were coming up through the system at the same time as I was, and they have similar experiences, stories, anecdotes of being marked down. He said that he felt they were disregarded and judged in a very demeaning manner at times. Little comments started to add up, comments about my hair, which was a high top style cut at the time. Sometimes it's hard to articulate as a black person or a person of color, hard to put your finger on what it is exactly. But you know, you just know, he said. He's talking about barrier to entry for referees once they start to get close to even National League level. It's a pity this happens, but we all know the refs in the PGMO are like a boys club, a cartel. Getting new refs in means less games and money for the incompetent buffoons currently within the PGMO. They have no incentive to add good referees from here or abroad to their pool. So we'll keep continuing to put up with their shit whilst they ruin football. Hope you've enjoyed this video and as always, please like and subscribe, really helps me to grow my channel and thank you very much for watching.